guys, we left off day one World of Concrete in Vegas. It is now day two. It's 6 a.m. in Vegas, which means it's about 9 a.m. in New York. That's why I'm up so damn early. We have an 815 media event for Diablo Tools where they're going to be releasing their new products. And I am excited to be able to film all of this, to show it to you, and actually demo all this stuff too. I am going to be putting the time marks on the left-hand side here, so that way you can see each brand if you want to scroll through specific brands. I'm also going to be doing separate videos of each brand individually. Just need time. There's a lot of videoing here. But we're going to start at Diablo's media event. We are going to go through summaries of their tools, and then in stay tuned for a more in-depth video later. Thank you. Um, 2019, I believe, is our last media event. And how we did that is we recognized what the users are looking for, we think better than anybody else, and we took two and three hundred dollar blade uh, technology and we put on a blade that's ten dollars and fifteen dollars. So with this we launched a brand new blade last summer, uh, next generation demo demon that will really maximize and extend the battery life by having carbide that is hard enough to withstand this type of nails but impact resistant so it doesn't break or shaft. Oh, Steve, William, how do we show this? So what I've got here, Russell, I've got a piece of LVL loaded up with some flat lock screws. Those are specifically designed structural lumber, um, extremely hard. And then loaded up with some shingles, some flashing, and it's topped off with a piece of plywood. Woo! So. So that you can see that blade was sparky, it was drawing, it starts to climb, climb, cut, which is going over the fastener. Uh, so there's a lot of things that blade is going on now. Alright, next topic is uh, metal cutting. We're going to be cutting quarter inch wall square tubing. We're going to do it with our traditional bonded abrasive cut off method. And then we're going to show you the newer, better solution with 14 inch cement. Barely heat the piece up, right? So we're yeah. cutting essentially in a room temperature environment where you've got to be careful if you ever want to do this. Make sure you've got to stand it up. Yeah. Now, look at the side of it. You can see burning, discoloration. Uh, because you're getting past the point of melt, right? You're melting it. It's half inch. So we're going to show you what you can do with the cement blade on a typical wood cutting circular saw. Oh, yeah. These are 16 gauge studs. Good stuff. So now we have an 8 inch 54. We're cutting steel deck here. They are 854. clean finish but this blade's going to cut all day it's not going to fracture teeth blades with some, some new range all right yeah so we have a piece of stud material here two by we would put that up you might be drilling horizontally you might be drilling vertically what we're going to do is we're going to drill down with 10 pounds of weight show the difference in the wear and tear on the tool the wear and tear on the user there i'm running with the diablo the new innovation that we've launched and steve has a competitive product on my right we're just going to let it go. We'll see our hands on top just to set it, and then we're going to release it and let it cut. Can you see that other one? Yeah. So I've used all that, but not not this specific one. Ready? Yeah, 
So have you seen our spade bits? I don't. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's what your, I. Your your demo bits yeah. are crazy. That's the ones I buy for you. Can, what I can do is I can compare the spade bit with that well, yeah. and see which one. Dude, that, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, we were talking about. Uh, yeah, like what we were talking about. Other types of bits. It's just because of convenience. Metal saws, bimetal, and then. Diamond grit, but a carbide grit. Exactly. Fine tooth so you take up the TPI. But it, yeah, actually a fine tooth would probably be, but we have to get it like really fine. That, that's probably, that, a fine tooth probably actually work better. Lexi, nice to meet you. 18 TPI. Okay. So that's what I'm wondering. So either I'm thinking of like a 14 or... What we're launching here today is a Diablo blade. Uh, we're calling it um, uh, Wood Demon. And it's a 40 tooth blade design. And the technology on here is absolutely insane. So for $50, it will grip uh, and cross cut better than any other blade in the market will stand behind that. And so a forest blade will cost $200. Red oak veneer plywood. So we wanted to change the game by being the first in the world to bring a carbide just, just into the reciprocating blade awesome territory. So for the guy, for people that don't realize it, Logan, maybe we kind of go back quickly and show bimetal attempting to cut stainless steel, and then what's the, the power of carbide and what it brings to this application. Like, zip, zip, and I know? use a hacksaw for everything oh, too. I know. I have some two inch schedule 40 stainless steel type. I'll use the Lennox competitor and we'll cover that and see how it does. They're all stripped. But this this is what where the world was just a couple years ago. Yeah. Now try a piece of rebar. Starts a little bit, the teeth strip off. So that's what your limitation was. And so, <laughs> carbide is the preferred solution. And by the way, carbide is bigger than bimetal. So, amp delivers 100 times longer or 33% higher in retail. So, if a blade is $12 for carbide, amp is $15, but it doubles the performance. Okay, so we'll show you a couple amp products quickly. Uh, have a little fun with this. How are we going to do this, guys? All right, we got the same two inch piece of schedule 40 stainless steel. We got the thick metal amp blade that you just saw cut stainless steel and rebar. Thing, a long time. One and a half inch thin wall stainless steel pipe, right? Two pieces. Again, 
well PPI. And right now the competition doesn't have a carbide solution for that. So we had to go to bimetal. Let's see what the bimetal to count for this application looks like. Okay, ready? Alright. Good. Oh. dedicated metal, dedicated general purpose, and a dedicated nail embedded wood. Our system here, this will fit both a, a DeWalt, a Milwaukee, and a Dremel. So it's a very, it's a patented system that slides out, it's no mystery. We have this plunge area here, it's a radius tip, and it creates like a little pilot point when you're starting. So you know, think of it, difference of having a spatula and trying to start versus a rounded nose of it where it starts on that, and it's actually easier to plunge, but it's also easier to start and get a pilot. Yeah, it's their screws in it. That's awesome. That's Standard tube cutter, bit on, on the market. It's a DeWalt. Believe it or not, it's the overwhelming dominant way people are using today. Right here. Two cutters. Two cutters. This costs around 15 bucks, 17 bucks. And you hit rebar, what do you do? You got to stop, and maybe you're lucky enough to have a rebar cutter, which, by the way, you can't be in a hammer mode for this is rotary. This costs you around 40 bucks. And then pick a number of time. It could be five minutes, it could be 50 minutes that you, if you have to get through that. And then you gotta switch it out and go back to your tube cutter. That's what exists today. So we said, hey, wow, there's a great opportunity to reinvent this thing, have game changer technology. So if you hit it, you can continue to get the job done. So what we did is we created a full carbide head four cutter system that takes small bites of the rebar, it's very low vibration. Uh, it's very cost effective. It, it, the tube cutter is $17. This is 23 to 25 so not a lot of money. Let it rip. So it's already tipped off the edge of that. I mean, and it probably is going to do damage to the tool when it gets hung up on that rebar. So the solution is that full carbide head Diablo rebar demon. Let's see what we got. That full carbide head, again, it's controlled, controlled movement of that rebar removal out of the hole, continue to finish the hole that you need in the concrete, exactly where you started. So, when we went out to the market, and, and, and if you look at a lot of applications, you know, they want to be able to drill and fill, want to reduce dust, 
And you know that, that create this all this time is money. When you make these holes, right now, it's very cumbersome for users to be able to clean them. The bit itself is core, is solid. Under, unlike the hollow bit itself, this thing is solid. It's a solid core. And then you have the carbide head. So unlike the insert knives, the carbide. So you can hit rebar, you can take the heat, go up to 1800 degrees versus the existing design that can only take around 800. This can take the heat. But then we put a stainless steel sleeve around it. So what it's doing is suck it up through this whole sleeve that's very high quality. And we can get up to 97% dust extractor. So we're going to just show you how much dust is generated on the job site with a standard bit and then that blow brush blow method which the anchor companies recommend it has to be done before you install an anchor. So here we go. One hole is that eight inch hole depth, preparing for doweling. That's just, that's just the dust generated outside, right? So it exposed everybody, myself and everybody on the job site. Now, you gotta get in here, and I gotta, first thing I gotta do, usually is three or four pumps. With more dust, still got dust, and then you gotta grab the brush, right? You gotta go back and make sure you keep track of this. Now we gotta go blow again. So back in the hole. There's still residue left. That's one hole. And now we can proceed with our mechanical anchor, our concrete screw, or our epoxy anchoring uh, preparation. So how do we eliminate all those steps? Eliminate all that dust, eliminate all those steps, and free protection and security on the job site, but also allow them to work as quickly as possible with quarter and more and more cordless drills. So, the solution is going to be the amp rebar demon. All right, let's go. The same situation. Hold on. All right, I'm going to again. So that was the event. I absolutely loved it. This is me picking up my Diablo vest. You'll see me wearing it later, but it's time to head to Milwaukee. I hit up their marketing team, let them know I was on my way, and we're going to test out some new shit. Yeah, I got you. Let me just get her a battery. Oh, that was nice. I just can't cut straight for shit. Rig or the handheld? I think the handheld okay. would do more. If it matches your ticket, come find me and we'll get you your prize. We also have a performance gauge that's going to coach you into how much pressure to apply. Very last prize We also put a very unique safety feature in this tool, which is The perfect entry to the system. The tool is going to.
to sense that and rather than taking you for a 360 raffle, degree spin, it's gonna stop. It's gonna be you safe. four, three, three, nine. So that simulates what happens when you hit a five four, three, and the tool three, senses that yeah, and it's going to shut off entirely, again, keeping awesome. you safe. Let me put them on, let me make sure it's connected to my phone. Thank you. Let her rip. Milwaukee has a lot of really nice high impact torques and I'm actually going to be doing a head to head with a competing brand just to see which one is more efficient coming soon on this YouTube page. But I am really impressed with all the Milwaukee products that are coming out and it's time to head to Hilti because you guys know I had to stop at Hilti. So let's look at Get some free tools. So this is roughly our portfolio. Yeah. Um, we have our impact wrench, and then you can use this um, active core control if you're setting anchors. Okay. It automatically, you scan the box, and it automatically puts the right torque on the right anchor for the application. For drill and heavy wood applications, so it's our SF10W. Yeah. Um, we're bringing the TE50, so this is kind of like every truck kind of combi hammer. Yeah. So that'd be a good fit. It's a little bit more economical, but it does everything and keeps you safe. Okay. That's got our core control. So this is uh, so this is it. So this just allows you to like be able to release it, but right. uh, with the data cable, you can upload all your data. So if you need to keep track of it, um, the other thing too, the service on this is like industry best because we, um, with all of our tools, but w where it's a really big deal, it's a lot of these tools when they go in for service, they come back three, four, or five weeks later. Right. This okay. is like shipping for you probably a day. Yeah. It gets repaired in a day and it gets back in a day. So if you need to also just calibrate it, we that's can do that too. awesome. Okay. The band saw. There's an SEM that we should have you try too. It's okay. a metal zerk saw. Okay. And it just it shreds anything really quick. So okay. the SEM six, uh, the ML, so metal cutting left side uh, yep. plate, um, works really well. So yep. um, it has sense tag, so if your hand comes off the tool, um, yeah. it just stops, it applies That's the brake, awesome. it's safe. The other thing too is if it drops or does something funny out of sequence, it'll also shut it off. So okay. it just protects you, make sure that you stay safe. But yeah, the grinders freak me out a little bit. <laughs> what's, what's cool about that though is that you yeah. get that small handle like on the barrel yeah. uh, because of the sense tech, but it provides you that dead man switch uh, functionality. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, and the sense tech equipment is in here? Yeah, it's inside. That's awesome. It, 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 if you have gloves on, if you're doing line work and yeah. you have gloves on, it, it still tech. senses it? That's awesome. Now it is designed as a two-handed tool. On the That was really smooth. That was nice. We have a smaller one too if you want to try that. That's the same thing. That little guy right there. Hang it for the rebar. Yeah, I'll try it. For why? Because it only goes to two inches. Oh, okay. And it's extremely compact. Plates are I like that one better. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, those were nice. Yeah. Alright guys, like I said, I am going to do more in-depth videos of each company. I just wanted to give you a nice summary of what's going on. But now we're going to do mostly inside. We're going to see everything inside. Got it? That's it. That's it. That's it. fall protection, but we also have to make sure we understand what our rescue plan is. We have to understand how ginormous huge yo these are crazy this is the app a few years ago this is like K 
hit. Hey, let's go look at their engine. Come here. I'm in the, the Hoonigan car. Get that on camera. <laughs> no one prayed me for nothing, so. Babe. So you said Sea World. I'm like, what? How is this like Sea World, bro? Sea Ma. Hi. Are you kidding me? Almost fell. Some car hard gear. No, I'm like, so paranoid. Yo, this is Mad Night. Products you guys have here, and then um. If you guys ever want to reach out and talk about anything, just let me know. Yeah. Because I don't have, I'm not. My card is, yeah. You can just contact me. Yeah. And touch with Alex. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not working with a boot. Find brakes in the uh, in the wire. These aren't these aren't the tools. Because obviously now they. Alright guys, so that was a brief summary of what the inside looked like. There was yeah. definitely a lot more stuff than I had recorded, but a lot of the stuff that I use and incorporate into my job site is all outside, so that's why I came back outside. Anybody that actually it's is the in the concrete field and interested in things like that and um, are looking for new material and manufacturers should definitely go in and explore. There's like three different sections in the convention center of it. But I spent the rest of the time talking to other people. Acme Tools came up to me and was talking to me for a little bit. And then um, I found, well, I didn't find them. They found me. But the people that follow me on social media and knew that I was going to be there with Trollco gear, they happened to come up to me. My mic was not on for this, so I'm doing a voiceover because I missed all of the audio for it. And I didn't know until I came here to add it. So I just want to give everybody a little bit of a shout out that came up to me and you know knew that I had troll code gear and said that they watched me I think that that stuff is so cool and you know it means a lot to me because I'm on here for hours and hours on end recording and editing for you guys to see so it's cool that my work doesn't go unnoticed but everybody that came up to me got all the merch as promised and I was just excited to be able to hand it out as far as the rest of the world of concrete, I didn't necessarily get to attend the rest. I actually got strep throat and had to go home early. Not a fan of it, but um, I think that it was a really cool event, and they also had a lot of contests that I missed. I wish I could have stayed for them, but there was just in general a lot to see, and the price for admission for what you get for it is not bad at all. Uh, a lot of the brands actually give away a lot of stuff, while you attend their booths and you sign up for their email lists and stuff like that if you are in construction i do recommend at least going to the world of concrete once so we left the event at around four or five o'clock i don't remember and went back to the hotel and from there we picked something inside the hotel because at that point i was really starting not to feel good so if you ever go to fountain blue poppy steak was what we got yesterday fire just expensive and if you're looking for something on the cheaper side washing potato not everybody knows your name but it was really good fire food stay tuned for part three of world of concrete